In today's show, we're going to talk about Power Apps Delegation. You know, that pesky yellow triangle. Boop, boop. Yeah, that's right. The blue squiggly. That thing that drives you crazy, but you probably don't really know what it means. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the basics. What is it? Then we're going to talk about some different data sources and functions and how you can maybe work around some delegation stuff. I'm going to try and sprinkle in some advanced stuff and just other little tidbits I've learned from all my years of fighting delegation. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today's topic is Power Apps Delegation. It's a nasty little topic that a lot of people try to ignore. So what I thought we'd do is we're going to break down and talk about what it is, right? We're going to make sure we're all on the same page. We understand what it is, what causes it, all those fun things. So we're going to start with those basics. And then from there, we're going to kind of talk about maybe some of the variety of it, you know, because really what it matters is it's a function of what is your data source, but also what functions you're using, but even what operators you're using. So there's a lot of pieces that kind of go into the puzzle. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about 500 versus 2000. We're going to you know, sprinkle in some SharePoint, some SQL, some uh, common data service, and just try and make sure that we kind of get an all up you know, overview of what delegation is so you guys can be better equipped to handle it. So even if you've got a decent handle on it, I still hope there'll be some things you'll learn a little bit later in the video because I'm going to try and you know, bring all the knowledge that I have on this lovely topic. All right. That's enough blah, 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 because there'll be plenty of blah, blah, blah. So let's just switch over to my desktop and get started. Okay, so over here on my desktop, I've got a framework of an app altogether. So I've already added a, a SQL table. So Azure SQL, it's a really large uh, table, a bunch of data. And I've added a common data service entity that has a whole bunch of data. Because what I want to do is while we're going to primarily teach from SharePoint, I want to be able to compare and contrast those two. So I just threw those over here. You can see they made them on a little screen. And so we can jump over to these galleries if we need it along the way. But so let's jump over here to SharePoint. And so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to add a gallery. So insert a gallery. We'll do vertical. And so then here we're going to search for our friend SharePoint. Boom, boom. And so then here on the Shane team site, there is a list called Giant right here. Connect. And so this list has uh, about 25,000 items. Woo. And so I made all those with PowerShell. And so I made this list with 25,000 items. And then I went over here and I went to the common data service and I imported or I made a, an entity from SharePoint data to grab those same 25,000 items. So these two have the same exact data. The SQL table does not. Um, if you're wondering how I made a SharePoint list with 25,000 items, the way I did that was with the PNP PowerShell. It's a bunch of other stuff that was on this channel before I did Power Apps. If you got questions about that, leave me comments. Or if you just want to see me make a video that showed you how to make a bunch of sample data, leave a comment. Maybe I'll do that one day. Anyway, okay, so now we've got our SharePoint list. And as you can see, it's happy, right? Now, the first thing I want you guys to understand, so if you throw a label over here, right, this is just some stuff you need to kind of know along the way that helps you. You can use the count rows function. And I'm going to say, hey, count rows, I want you to use gallery one dot all items, right? So this is a way to know how many items in your gallery. Now, if you look at this, you're like, wait, Shane, you just said this list has 25,000 items in it. Why is the gallery only showing 100 items? Well, the trick to this is that Power Apps and uh, SharePoint got together and said, hey, you know, Shane doesn't really want to see all 25,000 items. We can technically show them to him, but we don't want to. But if you scroll to the bottom, you hit the bottom of the 100, what happens is it loads the next 100. Oh, look at that. And then you hit the next 100. And so, boom, boom. And then finally, boom. So it's loading them 500 at a time. Now, what's interesting was it actually went and got 500. It only shows 100 in increments. But when I hit the bottom of the 500, it'll then go to 600. And so if we sat here long enough, and I will not do it, and I will not make you watch me do it, but I've scrolled all the way to the bottom. It will scroll to the bottom of 25,000. Makes your browser really mad because then all of a sudden it's got literally 25,000 things going on. So don't do it. But all the items are technically here. And that's because when I did this request, right, SharePoint and Power Apps work together to get me my data. So that's the first step in this, is understanding how much data you're seeing, because that's going to help you as you start to wrap your head around delegation. So then if you go in here, let's just talk about delegation. So if you say, I want to filter the giant list, how about where color equals red, right? So my sample data has three different colors. So that's actually going to go out and go to SharePoint and get the data. And so what you need to understand here is this is what is called a delegable query. So what that means is that in the grand scheme of things, right, don't, don't get offended, but Power Apps is lazy, right? Power Apps tries to do as little work as possible. 
So when I wrote this query, filter giant where the color equals red, you know, I said, hey, Power App, show it to me. Power App says, all right, hold on one second. Power App says, hey, SharePoint, this Shane guy wants to see all the records where um, the color is red. Go do that. So Power Apps delegated the work to SharePoint. SharePoint goes and does all the processing and figures out, oh, okay, here's the list of all the items where it's red. And so then it starts returning those back to uh, Power Apps in small chunks so that we can then go through, right? So then if we hit play, once again, we could scroll down here. So there's, you know, 200, 300, 400, 500, right? And the reason I'm going to 500 because we know that's part of the delegation story. So you can see that we could scroll to the bottom and because of the way my data is set up, it's about 8,000 records are there where the filter color is red. So that is a delegable query. Delegation, delegating the work to the data source is a good thing in Power Apps. Yay! So we've done something positive here and we've made um, the work do. And the reason we want to do that is because we don't really want, you know, the opposite, right? Imagine if we had to say, Hey, I want to filter this list. Okay, SharePoint, download all 25,000 items in my browser. Ugh. And then in my browser, process all 25,000 items and find the 8,000 that match the color red, right? That is terribly inefficient. And if I was on my fast computer connection, that's great. But on like a mobile phone, my mobile phone would probably catch on fire from that, right? So what they've done is they've delegated all that work to SharePoint. So then that way, the amount of data that comes across the wire is just the data that matches the query instead of the whole data set. So it's making your app faster and more efficient. Yay for delegation. So this is good. So what if we though then say, okay, well, we filtered, that's fine. But what if we go up here and we change this instead of, you know what, I want to do a search. I want to search the giant list for the text, um, I'm going to search for the text red in the field color. Uh, you know, and I probably shouldn't use the word color, but that's how you do it. So right away, look, I've got this blue line and this yellow triangle. And what's really interesting, this is why I put this over here. Look at the count rows. It's 247. We should make that bigger. That's a small number. That's a bad number. We want to see it. 24. All right, we've got 247 items in my gallery. So what happened here? Well, the yellow thing says, hey, delegation warning, the search part is forming might not work correctly on large data sets. So what happened behind the scenes was I typed in this query, right? Power App said, hey, SharePoint, Shane, why don't you do a search? SharePoint's like, nah, baby, nah, I don't do that. So instead what happened was SharePoint returned the first 500 results, okay? Not the first 500 results that match this query, literally ID item one to item 500, send them down the browser, right? So it downloaded all 500 items, and then once it had those 500 items, then locally in my browser, it went and processed those 500 items and found all the ones where the word red or the text red was in the column color. And so that's where it found 247 matches. Woo! So, but what happened to item number 501 to 25,000? Nothing. Literally nothing happens, right? Those That data was completely ignored, right? If we scroll to the bottom here, we get to the bottom, we stopped at 500, which is just dumb luck. Um, but so item 501 through 25,000, they were completely ignored. Another really important thing to note, right? So when we were building the app, we saw the yellow triangle, right? I really like this triangle like motion. I don't know why. I've been watching too much football or something. Or maybe it was triangle press. I, whatever, you don't care. Anyway, um, so you see the yellow triangle and we saw the blue squiggly, but as a user that is running your app, what indication do I have that I have missing data here? Nothing, nothing, right? Your users do not know that they're not getting all their search results back. So the entire onus of dealing with delegation falls on your shoulders because you're the only one that will know. I mean, they'll know because they're like, wait a minute, I just put something in the system and it's not showing up. You're going to get complaints like that, but the users don't uh, don't have this. So in Power Apps, what determines whether or not a query is delegable is it really comes down to, for me, I think of it as three pieces. There is the data source, right? So what data source are you using? Are you using SharePoint? Are you using SQL? Are you using CDS? Are you using some third other data source I'm not thinking of, right? So the data source is one piece of it. Secondly, the function, right? So in this case, you saw that like our simple filter was able to be um, 
delegated off to SharePoint, but our search function wasn't. Right? And so for example, if we take, all right, so search giant red color. So if we jump over here to our SQL and CDS, let's go to common data service. So if we go over here and run that same thing, we say, hey, we want to search giants where um, red, oh, red is in the column color right there. Look at this. Do, 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 do. Boom. We get all of them. And if we were to sit here and scroll for you know, long enough, we would get to the bottom, right? Let's, let's, let's just scroll. All right, so we'll scroll down here. So there's 218. Remember, this is the same exact data set. Oh, there you go. We're in the 540s. Far enough. So the function search can be delegable. It's delegable to SQL. It's delegable, delegable to common data service, but it's not delegable to SharePoint. So the function matters. The third piece of this puzzle is what we refer to as the operator. So let's go back to our friend filter. All right, so if we go back to filter, so filter giant, right, it's our SharePoint list, um, where animal equals um, a zebra, right? So this is a delegable query, and so we should get some results back here in a second. Boom, shakalaka. But if we then go in here, what if we do an and, right? People ask me to make sure I cover this. So we can say and color equals red. So still a delegable query, right? So now we're only getting the red hits and we're only getting hundred at a time. So we know that once again, we could scroll to the bottom and we're gonna get the whole data set, right? Because SharePoint's doing all the work. So Power Apps doesn't care how many results you have. They're just gonna to work together to bring those back in small bits. So that's this piece. But what you have to be careful about is as you add, or as you go in here, some operators are delegable, some are not. So for example, how about instead of animal equals that, what if we wanted to use the in? What if we wanted to say um, zebra in animal, right? So that's, you know, um, that fuzzy SQL syntax, but what happened? The in operator is not delegable to SharePoint, so now all of a sudden, we only got 124 results back, right? Because it only went and processed the first 500. So you have to watch out for your operators because now they took a delegable query, which was filter, and made it undelegable or indelegable or I, I don't know, something. And it's also, I always, always, just, I always used to say delegatable. Uh, it turns out it's delegable. I learned a new English word uh, when I was writing the uh, Microsoft documentation for this. So anyway really weird scenario. So, so you have to watch out for your operator because now it took and broke a previously uh, working function. But what happens if we go, let's do the same thing. Let's go over to SQL and see, I don't even remember. I think SQL can do this though. So if we go over here and say, Hey SQL, I want to filter your table where this, Oh, that's not the name of the column. What's the name of the column? Um, so there's no, oh, so here we'll do uh, zero one. And we cross our fingers, boom, shakalaka. So in for filter is delegable for SQL. So there's this like nasty matrices of, you know, what is and isn't delegable, right? But it's really the way I think of it, right? Data source, function, and then operator. And that's kind of how you put the story together. So you have to kind of go. And the, the, I'll be honest, I don't have all of them memorized, right? I really didn't remember if in worked or not there. I thought I did, but I wasn't sure. But the most important thing to understand is if you see the yellow triangle, delegation is biting you in the butt. So that's when you need to care. And be like, all right, well, well, this was a dumb way to write this anyway, right? I really meant to say animal, animal equals zebra. Oh my goodness, typing is hard, people. There you go. And so then now we're right back into delegation land. We're getting all of our data back. Boom, right? You see the 100, which tells us we're getting it. Now, I keep telling you, let's actually undo. Let's go back to our broken one, right? So I keep telling you that this only processes the first 500. But if you've ever looked at delegation for more than 30 seconds, you're like, what, Shane, 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 there's a button. You're right. So if you go over here and click File, and then you go to Settings, and then Advanced Settings, this data delegation limit is set to 500 by default. So you can change this all the way up 2000 is the maximum. As soon as I change that, you see the dots going, my app is running. You're gonna see we're gonna get, oh, now we get 466 because now we're processing item one to item 2000. But what about um, item 2001 to 25,000? They're still skipped. So you can increase your delegation limits up to 2000 
Um, and so if you have a data set, you know, that you know, fits in, that's okay. Because sometimes that happens. Sometimes you're like, you know what, I'm never going to have more than 600 items in this list. So I don't care that the query is not delegable. I'm going to set the limit to 1,000 and then work through it. That's okay, right? It's not ideal. I prefer you found a way not to delegate. But if you have um, you know, a, a smaller data set and you know it's never going to be any bigger, then that's okay. Some of my customers, we've done things like that. And so then I put in like little checks. And we'll talk about how to do that in a second. But we put in little checks to see if they actually exceeded that number they told me they would never exceed. Because you know what always happens when the customer tells me they're never going to exceed a number? They exceed the number. So, so the, the big thing here that I want you to think about when you're looking at this little guy, though, is when you see this yellow triangle, okay? The way that I do this, this is the reverse of the U.S. criminal system, right? It is guilty until proven innocent. If you've got a yellow triangle in your app, and I've reviewed hundreds of apps at this point, if you've got yellow triangles in your app, you need to tell me why. You can't say, oh, I don't know, I didn't even feel like messing with it. Eh, wrong answer. That yellow triangle is only allowed to stay if you're like, oh, yeah, it's delegating, but my data set's only got 17 items and I don't really care. Perfect. I accept that. If you're like, I have a yellow triangle and I just haven't gotten to it yet, I'm going to give you that mean look. So keep that in mind. Yellow is bad. Um, another weird thing I guess we should talk about here. Um, so... You can be like zebra and animal, and um, how about, we're just going to do something like this, red in color. Oh, look, they fixed it. Okay, so this actually knows, kind of, um, so what it's doing here is it's saying, hey, I've got multiple things that are causing delegation. A lot of times Power Apps has a hard time if you have multiple things causing delegation, right? Because we know this N is also, but it's not blue. So typically speaking, what I try to tell people is if you are seeing the blue, you know, work left to right because you might fix this one, right? Because if I fix this one, I'm like, all right, fine. I really meant to do animal equals zebra, right? Oh, sorry. Animal equals zebra. I haven't even been drinking yet. I can't type. But see, so then now it lights up more blue things. So fix left to right because you might have more than one thing that are causing delegations in complex queries, okay? All right, next important thing for you guys to understand here is let's look at another thing that happens sometimes with our friend filter. Um, so here we're like, hey, animal equals that. So instead, another thing that comes up with SharePoint more than other data sources, but common data service can see it too, is that the column type can matter. So for example, you know, your SharePoint list has a created by column, right? So you can do, hey, I can do created by dot display name equals the glorious Shane Young. And so this is going to filter all the data where the display name for created by was me, which I created all the records. That's why you're seeing all the records, right? That's a delegable query. Yay! Created by claims. Ah, oh, the claims property is not delegable. All right, so it doesn't matter. That's not my claim. My claim is Shane at Power Apps 911. That doesn't matter. What it's trying to tell me here is that this column or this field, not column, this field is not delegable. So you've got to be real careful when you start using SharePoint because those complex columns, they can cause additional delegation issues. Okay, so that was another one. Another thing that comes up a lot, and this is not uh, just SharePoint. This is also any of your data sources. But so if I come in here, I'm like, hey, I want to do created by display name. Well, we know that my display name, right? Let's just throw another label on here. I said throw another label. Oh, not there. Delete. Delete. Let's try skin. Don't you hate when you accidentally add them to galleries? I know I do. So if we do user dot full name, right? We know this is going to show you my full name. I hope. There I am. So what you'll typically do, right, I do this in apps all the time, is, I mean, hey, I want to filter this data so the user only sees their own records. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to do this. Womp, womp. What happened? Well, the blue showed up, so it's not delegable. So what do I do? Well, the reason this is not delegable is because SharePoint does not know how to run the user full name function. SharePoint's like, oh, what? I don't know. Do it yourself, Power Apps. So, but what you can do here is you can just store this in a variable, right? So come back over here to app on start, for example, and be like, hey, set bar username. And then is that, right click and run your on start, boop. Come over here, and so then now I can just say, hey, you, I want you to be var 
username. Notice I over capitalized the S, not on purpose, but that's all right. We know how I'm having a tough time typing. But so then now I got the same data. I'm now filtering by the logged in user, but it's not, or it is delegable, so no warning. So that's the one, this thing I need you guys to, to work on, right? Is to, when you find delegation, is there another way to do it, okay? That's the big thing I want you guys to be thinking about as you're working through this. I'm gonna look over here my cheat sheet real quick. Um, so we talked about search not working with um, SharePoint, right? But one of the things you can do with SharePoint is it has a function called starts with. So you can say, I want to find out if uh, the animal column, or no, how about the title column? Title's way down here. If the title column starts with item title, oh my goodness, title... 12. I don't know. I'm just making up stuff. Boom, boom. So that is a way to do search like, right? So because search is a full text index thing, right? It goes and looks through all the portions of the field you're searching on, but starts with at least lets you get very similar functionality, right? Because now I'm getting item title 112, 120, 121 out of SharePoint. What's interesting is I don't think that function works with um, the other data sources. Let's go see. I don't know. So if I go over here, I guess I gotta do it like this. So we'll say starts with my key field starts with zero, zero, zero. All right, which would really be all of them, but I don't care. Close it, close it. And so it looks like, oh, SQL does support it. So I swear SQL used to not support that one. See, once again, I don't have them all memorized. I just come over here, try to do my thing, and see whether I see a blue or not, right? That's the key, right? Whereas if we go over here, who knows? Let's try this one. So this is CDS. So we're gonna say filter. That is not what I just did. Starts with um, animal starts with a Z. Oh, look at that. This one's gonna to work too, I think. Boom, all right, so there you go. Starts with works in all of them. Yeah, I swear it used not to. There you go, it doesn't matter. The blue triangle wasn't there, or blue triangle, the yellow triangle wasn't there. That's all that mattered, okay? So now let's kind of, you know, now we've talked about starts with and how you can use that to get some search like functionality. Um, so let's talk about some other functions. Probably the biggest one I wanna talk about, notice here I kept doing count rows, gallery one, that all items, right? So that's looking at my galleries, all the items in the gallery and counting the number of rows in there. But count rows is not delegable. So if I did this, if I said, we'll just do count rows, how many you know items do I have in my SharePoint list? Well, it's gonna tell me, and what are we gonna get back? We're gonna get 2,000, right? Because it says, hey, SharePoint, count the rows in Giant. SharePoint says, I don't know how to do that. Here's the first 2,000 items. Power App said, oh, I can count those items. One, two, three, four, five, 2,000? Who knew, right? So this is one of those things though I will, this is that circuit breaker I talk about. So my apps for customers tells me, hey, set it to 2,000, we'll never have more than that. What I do is I like have this function and then I will just throw like a uh, warning triangle. Where is my triangle? Don't worry, I'll just, I'll just be here scrolling <laughs> way down here. All right, so I'll throw a warning triangle on the screen and I'll be like, hey, you're, you're visible, I'll copy this. So then I'll say, um, you know, your visible is equal to, you know, if that turns out to be equals 2000, then I know that you know we've ended up with um, too many items, right? So, and then that way, and then I'll have some text here. It says, hey, tell Daryl, right? It's one of my customers who did this for, tell Daryl he got too many items in the list and you're not seeing all the data, right? It literally says that. Um, kind of dork, whatever. So that's one of the ways I use this, but keep in mind, count rows is not delegable. It's only gonna get the first 2000 items. So that's important. Another function that comes up a lot that is not delegable is the um, uh, collect, right? So if I say, uh, we'll do clear collects, but clear collect, collect, they do the same thing. If I say clear collect, test uh, video collection, that's a really long name. And then I say, uh, just, you know, go get, filter uh, the giant list where color equals red. 
boom, if I press that button. Now what's really tough here is that there is no indication that this is not a delegable query, right? There is no blue triangle. Ah! I don't know what to tell you. The triangle is never blue. There's no yellow triangle either. There's no warning that this is going to happen. But if you use my old friend Count Rose, you say, hey, Count Rose, Count, um, what did I call that? Test video collection. 2000, that seems suspicious to me, right? Anytime it hits 2000 like that, I know that something bad happened. So what you need to understand, okay, right? You got to put your thinking cap on. Like it took me like an hour to like go watch Fiddler Traces to make sure I understood exactly what happens here. What's going to happen is this is going to be ran, right? This is delegable. So it's going to say, hey, SharePoint, go filter the records. But what it's going to do is it's going to append to it a only return the top 2,000. So SharePoint went and looked through all 25,000 and it got, what did we say earlier, like 8,000 hits, right? It got 8,000 matches. But uh, Power Apps said, hey, I only want the first 2,000. So only 2,000 of those 8,000 came back and went into the collection, right? So there was 6,000 more um, items where the color equals red that SharePoint knows about but Power Apps does not, okay? But you did not get a warning that this was not delegable. So you've got to be super careful here when you're using collections and delegation. And basically, this is where I do this circuit breaker thing, right? If that collection has 2,000 items in it, I bet something, I bet I'm over the limit, okay? But where I was really confused for a long time is that it, it, if we went and looked at this collection, right? We can do that. We can just click on this right here. Boop, boop. All of these are red. So it did filter the data. So we didn't get item one to item 2000 and then just get the red ones out of that. We looked at all 25,000, but we only got back the first 2000 matches. Okay. Th this was hard for me to wrap my head around. So now I will tell you that there are clever people on the internet who have made content and told you how to go and get the first 2000 and then get the next 2000 and your collection, a collection can technically be as big as you want it, right? If I throw another button on here, I'm like, hey, I want button. Oh, where's that button at? There it is. Right? I can say, hey, button, I want you to uh, collect into test video collection. Boom. Title equals dumb. I'm very, I'm very descriptive with my titles. Where is that button? There it is. If I press this, right, my collection will get bigger. You can have, right, it's 2008 now. You can, it's not, it's 2020. Um, anyway, you can have um, as many items as you want in your collection. So people have made videos that talk about how to go take 2,000 and then add 2,000 more, 2,000 more until you got to all 8,000 of the matches. But remember, if you have 8,000 items in your collection, that means your browser has 8,000 items holding in memory, right? You complain about your machine running out of RAM all the time. Having collections with 8,000 items is not a good idea. And it might work great. I have the world's largest supercomputer here. I got like 2,000 gigs of RAM, right? This computer is awesome. It can deal with it. What about uh, Susie down the hall who's using a burner phone to run my app? Imagine if I tell her little burner phone to collect 8,000 items over a 3G connection, right? We're going to burn up the cell tower, we're going to burn up her phone, right? We're probably going to break things and cause fires. I don't want to cause fires. So do not do the thing where you make collections that become giant. Bad, bad, bad. Okay? Um, all right. So other things I want you guys to know, um, a couple of little quick tips. So remember, if you're using these other premium data sources, SQL or the common data service, which I have been doing a lot with the common data service lately, right? It's it keeps moving up my list of things I like. Um, both of them have the ability to do views. So I could build a common data service view that was already had some crazy complex filter applied to it. So then that way I see all the expense reports where, you know, there is a trip or there, there's a, the bar tab was included and Johnny did it and while on vacation, right? I, I could build this really complex, crazy filter that Power Apps can't do without delegation, but I could go build that query into a SQL or a CDS view and then just point my app to use those views and not have to make Power Apps do any of the filtering or searching. So keep that in mind. It is possible to use views. I think that was a great tip, you know. 
one of the things I did uh, was working on this video was I reached out to my friends on Twitter and so my friends on Twitter kind of gave me a whole bunch of ideas. I'll post a link to that Twitter thread down below because I think there's a lot of neat tips there that I've not covered in this video, I'll be honest. Um, there's also a great video by a guy named Reza, a friend of mine. He did like a five part series on delegation and different SharePoint columns and kind of how to work around them and do that. So I thought that was good. Um, but yeah, I think, I don't know, I feel like I've been talking too long, so I'm gonna stop. That's, that's at least your primer. That guy gets you guys going with delegation, right? So if you have delegation showing up in your app, right? You open up your app, you're like, hey, there's that stupid yellow triangle. Or if you click on the little stethoscope and over here in your formulas, you'll see the warning here, right? If you've got delegation, remember, it is guilty until proven innocent. You've got to justify to me, well, not really to me, but to yourself, why you're letting delegation stay in your app because I don't know about you guys, but that triangle creeps me out. So I got to get that out of my app. And you know, there's no, there's no perfect answer for this, right? I think on Twitter, people are like, Hey, make sure you tell us how to get work around all the delegation. There's no one answer, right? What you have to figure out is, you know, what is your data sets? And you know, so where's your data source? What is your function you want to use? And then what is your, um, your operators? what one of those is causing delegation, and then figure out how to work with that particular one. So sometimes we use collections, sometimes we use views, sometimes we realize that, oh, we didn't want to do that, right? Distinct is another one that's not delegable. Count rows, uh, collect, those are probably the three most common non-delegable ones that you have to figure out, oh, did I really want to do it that way? And then you just have to figure out, I've said figure out like seven times, what do you do? So I will also remind you guys, right, if you go over here, Power Apps, Delegation. So I'm a firm believer that you all should read this page. It is not nearly as fun and as witty as I am, I hope. Um, but if you read through this, it's going to talk about and say all these same things I did, but in a much more professional manner. Um, so be sure to check that out. And then what's nice here is also you're going to see that, you know, you can go in here and you can click on the common data service and it'll be like, hey, down here, you can see here are the different functions and are they delegable or not? And it, notice like, for example, um, the sort function is not delegable in option set. Is that a problem? I don't know, but, but now you know. So you can make sure you're kind of playing for and accounting um, for that in your solution. So, but I've never, I've, I don't try to memorize all these. I just know I build my app, I do my thing. If I get the blue, the blue, oh, the blue line <laughs> or the yellow triangle, then I deal with it, right? Because, and, and the reason that we have delegation, right, the reason it comes up so much is, right, it, Power Apps is lazy. It and Chewy like to sleep on the couch all day, and so it's always trying to push work off to someone else, and so that's what's going to happen here. Um, so, anyway, check out these, right, so make sure you do that. I'm going to link to the Twitter thread below because there's a lot of great tips on there. Uh, hopefully you're interacting with me on Twitter so you can provide your feedback too. And then also keep in mind that this keeps evolving. So SharePoint, uh, you know, keeps adding more functions that are delegable, right? Common data source keeps adding more functions that are delegable. So they keep trying to make this a better and better story, but it's a story that you've got to understand to be responsible at Power Apps. Okay, I've been talking way too long. So with that, I'm gonna say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem is big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.